In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we commemorate the 10th Sunday of Luke. And our Gospel reading today was from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17, and you have them there in your bulletin. And it describes our Lord healing a woman that was crippled. In fact, Jesus often met with people who had various physical handicaps. There was the blind beggar on the road to Jericho, the paralyzed man who was carried by four friends to Jesus, the man with a paralyzed hand, and others. In ancient times, it was thought that some physical handicaps were the result of demonic possession. Our Lord did not believe this, and of course, we don't think or believe this today. Jesus did not treat people with disabilities any differently from anyone else. He loved all people the same. He approached them not as disabled persons, but rather as persons with a disability. That certainly makes a huge difference. The Gospel lesson today tells of a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. She was bent over and could in no way lift or straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her, laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. The first message of this Gospel is the power of Christ to straighten our bodies whether it be physically or mentally. Christ heals our body and our soul. Let's go through a few examples from the scriptures of his healing power. Consider the life of St. Peter, bent by the triple denial of the Master, yet so straightened out by Jesus that he enabled him to become the great apostle of faith who said, Lord, you know how much I love you. Consider the thief crucified next to Christ, his life totally bent by sin. Before he died, he breathed the prayer, Lord, remember me. And suddenly the great love of God flowed into the man's heart, and he heard the promise, Today you will be with me in paradise. One important message of this story is that God, who straightened the back of this woman, continues to make straight today the lives of those who have been bent from sin. The next important message is found in the words with which Jesus described the illness of the woman. He said, This woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, We see here that Jesus attributes this woman's illness not to God, but to Satan. We remember also St. Paul calling his chronic illness a messenger of Satan. Illnesses do not come from God. We should never blame God for things that are not right in our lives. things that are made by man. Christ spent his life healing the sick. We never encounter him inflicting illness on anyone. Death did not come into existence because God wanted it. Jesus himself wept at the tomb of Lazarus. Remember the words of the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done. Remember these words throughout the day. Think of these words when things are good and bad in your life. Lord, thy will be done. We also need to remember 
He only wants what is best for us. Not necessarily what we want, but what he thinks is best for us to grow. Remember the woman today had her infirmity for 18 years. Jesus warned us that we would have problems in the world. No one is immune to pain or insulated from suffering. We all experience problems in our lives. Life, in fact, is a series of problems, isn't it? We solve one and another is waiting for us. They are not all big. However, they are all significant in, in God's growth process for us. These problems can draw us closer to God. In Psalm 34, we hear and read these words. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Surely our most profound experiences of prayer will come in our most difficult and darkest days. When we feel low or even empty, we should turn to God. It is what we are suffering that we pray most earnestly and deep, deeply to God is when that suffering comes upon us and then we suddenly think, oh yeah, perhaps I should pray and maybe it'll get better. It is only, therefore, through this suffering that we grow closer to God. If you're facing trouble right now, and I'm pretty sure you are, don't ask why me or woe is me. Instead, ask God, how, Lord, should I handle this situation? And what do you want me, Lord, to learn from this? We don't ask those things, but do it. Try it. I am asking you, Lord, to straighten what is crooked and broken in my life. Help me fix it, Lord. Help me to accept as I pray these words, thy will be done. Think about it. Stop and slow down for a moment and ask, what does God want me to be done? Do it in all things in your life. It is through these intimate encounters with God that we feel his love for us and his healing power. Our God mends, our God straightens, and ultimately our God heals us. So today I'm asking you all, pray to the Lord to help you. Thy will be done. Amen.